Hello, welcome back. I'm Dr. Anil Goody. I'm a consultant and the director of the Homerton Fertility Centre in London and a consultant in reproductive medicine and surgery. Today we're going to go into a slightly different subject, looking at a paper which was published very recently in 2017 in RBM Online. And what this paper looks at is that it looks at the final oocyte maturation with two different GRH analogs in an antagonist cycle in the patients who are at the risk of ovarian hyperstimulation. This was done from a clinic in Turkey by Mr. Sukur et al. and is a retrospective analysis. Now in IVF, the most important part before you retrieve the eggs is the final follicle maturation. And the commonest drug used is HCG. You trigger final follicular maturation with HCG. This results in supraphysiological levels of steroid hormones and it increases the risk of ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. So we came across the alternatives and the alternatives were to use GRH analogs and these were quite good alternatives and what do GRH analogs do? They induce the rise of endogenous FSH and LH approximately similar to nature. That reduces the risk of ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome but it disrupts the luteal phase. What we know from Peter Himaden's paper is that if you add a small amount of HCG at a later part, then you will be rescuing the corpus luteum. Let's look at the materials and methods. These patients were women with a good reserve. They were young patients. Total number was 354, starting dose of 150. They were divided into three groups. Group A was somebody which was a hyperresponder, a polycystic ovaries, 33, and triptoralin acetate was used as the trigger. Group B again, a hyperresponder, number 75, and lupride acetate was used as a trigger. And group C were normal responders, 131 in number, and HCG was used as a trigger. The trigger doses were done between 35 and 36 hours. Triptolin acetate, that's 0 0.2 milligram of gonapeptil, was used in group A. Lupride was 5 milligram used in group B and HCG pregnal of 10,000 units. In group A and group B where you use the analog trigger, you gave a small amount of HCG 1500 at ovum pickup. Embryo transfer was done on day three and a maximum of two embryos were put. When you look at the results, the number of oocytes was slightly more in those with the over-responders, but it's not significantly different. The number of mature oocytes were again reasonably non-significant. The number of grade A embryos, top quality embryos, were again similar in all three groups. Number of embryos transfer between one and two. The endometrial thickness was completely similar in all these cases. Now let's look at the results. In group A, clinical pregnancy rates were 31.7%, group B was 37.8% and group C was 32.8%. Completely no signs of moderate or severe ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. Now, often HCG is used for final oocyte maturation, 
we know that giving HCG triggers the, the release and the increase of VGE, VEGF, which is vascular endothelial growth factor, which is a primary vascular mediator for ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. We know that one in 50,000 treatment cycles result in a death due to ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, and the incidence of ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome is about 1%. Now, we know that GNRH analogs are safer. We also know that it gives rise to natural release of FSH and LH. We're also aware that unless you give a small amount of HCG, luteolysis continues. And independently, GNRH analogs will give you a lower pregnancy rate. And it secretes significantly less VEGF. Now, a lot, many of us decided, yes, if you give a small amount of HCG, we don't see a very happy stimulation. That's absolutely fantastic. But the first, one of the first people to notice it was again Shehan in 2013, who noticed 23 cases of moderate to severe very happy stimulation when a small amount of HCG was given. We tend to give about six to seven hundred cycles at our center GNRH analog triggers and in the past we did see a significant rise even though much less than the normal dose of HCG we saw a significant rise of ovarian hyperstimulation and thus it is safer to freeze the embryos in this case and that is what we do and that's something which has to be considered if you have an over response. The effectiveness of GNRH analogs has not yet been understood. We know that the dose finding studies have been done but they're not complete and we are not entirely certain what is the exact dose that should be given. This study did show that both triggers gave good results and were very similar. Again, this was a retrospective data and also they did not use a thawed uh, embryos that were frozen and then thawed and that data was not there. Uh, thank you again for listening to the lecture. Now as you know that again this week we've had two observers who have come through our training program and it has been quite an extensive four days of teaching and then uh, which would happen at Dubai or and then again a week at the Homerton seeing how our systems work how our protocols work if you have any queries please email us on fertilitycourses at gmail.com I'll be more than happy to try in my spare time to see if I can answer those questions if you want to do a course I would suggest contact the IBCME we are doing it in October and we don't take more than 40 to 45 candidates to be able to do this intensive course. Thank you again. Goodbye.